Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to take a look at the efficiency of the brand new AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 in this ASUS ROG Flow Z13. And I'm only gonna say this CPU's name once today. However, for this video I ran several tests with different wattages, starting as low as 15 watt and going up to 80 watt. I also tested the highest TDP in manual mode with all the wattage sliders maxed out. But before we take a look at the results, I just want to make sure everyone is on the same page about what we actually have here. Now, this super high-end mobile CPU by AMD has 16 Zen 5 cores with 32 threads that can boost up to 5.1 GHz and it supports up to 128 GB of RAM, while in today's tested system it only has 32 GB of LP, DDR5, 8000 mega transfer per second RAM. It includes the new Radeon 8060S iGPU with 40 compute units, also known as CUs. To be clear, it is the top model of the new Strix Halo SKU by AMD, while it has lower tiered siblings. In theory, depending on the used device, it's supposed to support up to around 120 watt for the total TDP, whereas in this 2-in-1 laptop slash tablet, it can only maintain a stable 80 watt while in manual mode. And yes, it can boost up to 92 watt, but only for two minutes, and up to 93 watts for 10 seconds. And honestly, that last step doesn't really make sense. With the here included ASUS Armory Crate software of this laptop, we can adjust the TDP manually, but only as low as 28 watts. So I used an app called Universal X86 Tuning Utility to go all the way down to 15 watt for today's tests. But you have to factor in that this CPU has 16 cores and 32 threads and the available wattage has to be shared among all these cores and the graphics unit and even the RAM in this case. So while it is possible to actually use it with 15 watt, the performance won't be that great. Especially for gaming as the CPU cores will probably just start to kind of starve. So not only does the gaming performance drop by a lot, but especially the 1% lows suffer and the game gets more stuttery that way. While it seems to be okay, starting at around 25 watt or so. Which is why I compared 15, 20, 25 and 30 watt TDPs in the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark run on medium settings at 1080p, as that game utilizes both the GPU and the CPU by quite a lot. And before you ask, yes, I've tried to disable cores, which doesn't seem to be possible, not via the BIOS, not via Windows, and also using CPU lasso didn't seem to have any effect here. If you've got an idea, I'm open to suggestions, so let me know in the comments. In my previous video, I've already shown that the performance is actually really good at 30 watt when I compared it with the Z1 Extreme with the Radeon 780M in the ROG Ally X. And as we've just seen in the Cyberpunk benchmark, it would actually still be okay with around 25 watts. But I think its smaller siblings with less cores will be much more suitable for these lower TDPs. Now, I've actually tested every possible wattage setting between 15 up to 80 watt in gaming with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Why this game? Because it does not have a night and day cycle or any other events that would affect a consistent environment for the system to render and it's reacting pretty well both to CPU and GPU performance. So for this test I picked this fixed spot in the game, locked in in this specific viewing angle, adjusted the TDP settings and then took notes. But it turns out I had to wait around 1-2 to two minutes every time after changing the TDP because for some reason that's how long it took for the GPU clock to actually adjust to the new values and you can see that in this fast forwarded footage here. And that's quite the performance difference. And I'm not sure if there is an issue on ASUS's side here with the Z13 and the power management or whatever. So this is the curve that I got out of my results. The y-axis on the left presenting the FPS and the x-axis on the bottom the single wattage levels from 15 up to 80. The performance gains are pretty consistent from around between 20 up to around 50 watt and we get around 2 additional FPS per watt in this specific example. After that 15 watt zone, the FPS gains become smaller with every additional watt. Now, I can't tell you for sure if that curve would look the same on a different system that would enable a higher total TDP. But I assume that with 120 watts, we would not see that much more FPS in this specific scenario. By the way, you probably wonder how that dent over here happened. 
and to be honest, so do I. I quadruple checked that and for some weird reason at 65 watt the performance is not as high as it should be. I tried it with both the Universal X686 tuning utility and via the Armory Crate software. Same outcome, I rebooted the system, tried a different game, same outcome. Probably a bug Asus should look into. However, in my opinion, for this device around 60 watt would probably be some sweet spot, which might be the reason why Asus is in fact using 60 watt for the predefined turbo profile. And no, that's not the CPU bottlenecking because that curve looks pretty much exactly the same with ultra settings at a higher 1600p resolution. And here's also a look at the efficiency curve, which shows us the FPS per watt for each wattage setting. I was quite surprised that the efficiency is basically the same between 15 up to around 50 watts. But again, I think that is because of the big number of cores hindering it from becoming more effective at these lower wattages. And I'm sure that smaller chips will have a better efficiency at set lower wattages. Also here we can clearly see that starting at around 50 watt, the efficiency is decreasing pretty steadily. Um, also please be aware that these slight fluctuations over here at the left might be within the margin of error as the difference between single wattage steps is often pretty small. I also ran Cinebench R23, this time in 5 watt levels between 5 and 80 watts. And here are the results. The 90 watt result at the end is with the short time boosts enabled. And interestingly, that resulted in a noticeable uplift of the total score other than switching from like 75 to 80 watts. Also, the CPU seems to ignore any settings below 10 watt. However, the overall score is pretty impressive at basically every TDP in my opinion. 17,000 with only 30 watt is basically the same as my desktop CPU with only a third of the energy needed. And I really think that the gaming efficiency of this chip is amazing. If you've seen my video where I compare it versus the LIX at 30 watt, it achieves around 50% better or even more performance in most games. Again, at 30 watt. You just cannot get that level of performance with a dedicated GPU slash CPU combo at this moment in time. It's just basically impossible. Many laptops don't perform well if you underpower a 4070 to 35 watt and that's just the GPU. The CPU will usually at least need an extra 15 watt or so, leaving you with often worse frame times and around 20 watt more TDP in total. Okay, now let's also have a quick look at the results of 3D Mark Firestrike at 15 and 30 watt, as well as the maximum performance at the maximum TDP. And also the same for 3D Mark Time Spy as well. And for PC Mark 10, I just quickly ran the test with the laptop at its maximum TDP and also using this silent profile, which utilizes 35 watt and almost gets the same insanely high score here. So this laptop is just blazing fast, even at set silent mode for everyday tasks, really. And that's all for today's video. I hope that it was interesting and a bit enlightening for you. If you like the content, make sure to like the video and or subscribe to the channel for more videos with this new AMD chip. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and cheers.